Some news coming out of OTAs as we begin today's Bengals breakdown. Both Jamar Chase and T. Higgins are absent at organized team activities. Those beginning today for the Bengals, everything else had been off-season workouts. Higgins obviously is contract-related. Not totally sure if that's the case for Jamar Chase. Maybe he's doing the Micah Parsons, I'll just be away and train on my own, which he has been doing as well. We'll have more updates and news from OTAs on tomorrow's video, so make sure you guys check that out. We begin with an update from Dan Pitcher, who I think they do call Pitch after all. He does not have Burrow on a pitch count. Get, get it? It is kind of funny there. Uh, during this voluntary workout stage, as Burrow recovers from his uh, unusual wrist injury from last season, but that is a positive sign, I believe, for the Bengals and for Burrow. So what is your confidence level that Burrow stays healthy through the 2024-2025 season? Scale it for me from 1 to 10. Of course, 1 on the low end, 10 on the high end. Here's what Pitcher said on Joe Burrow. He says, we designed the whole thing to stay within the constraints of where the medical people think he should be and where he wants to be right now. Nobody's sitting there with a special pitch counter. But we've been smart how we put it together. This is obviously good news, and I wouldn't be surprised if there are some off days, on days, as Burrow goes along there. And Burrow's made comments how he wants to be more honest with how he feels as he gets older and, you know, is so important to this Bengals organization. I'm pretty confident it'll look the same or better. Uh, I am not worried about this. It is kind of a weird injury, but he's been throwing the ball with plenty of pace. It's not like it looks like, ah, oh, that's a really loopy throw. He's never had an elite arm, and that's okay because he knows how to win without having one. He knows how to be so accurate and so you know ahead of the timing even uh, at times for the receivers. To an extent, look, you're always going to be holding your breath with Burrow, right? Man's never had a normal training camp. I'd love to get one of those this year. He's obviously not going to play in the preseason. I'd, I'd like to not have to do breaking Joe Burrow hurt again. You know, during training camp, I don't want to see the, another, you know, calf strain pop up. That's not, it's not what I want to have happen, right? Burrow's injury history had the multi uh, ligament knee tear in 2020 that kind of cost him most of 2021's preseason and, and training camp. At least parts of it was, again, more rehabbing than showing growth there. Had the affidavit it cost him a bunch of weight. He lost a ton of, a ton of weight, by the way, which shit I could use. Uh, in the 2022 that cost him that training camp there. Then the calf strain this year. Now he's coming off the, the wrist tear. When he has been out there, he's been awesome. When he's been out there and healthy. Like, he clearly wasn't right in 2023. And, you know, now the Bengals know what they have in Jake Browning. Maybe they would have been more comfortable giving him more time to recover. It wasn't going to really be a, a, a thing they could do last year. I think we'll get back to 2022, 2023, or 2021 version of Joe Burrow this season. So when he is healthy, where do you rank Joe Burrow among NFL quarterbacks? He's, he's not one. That's, that's still Mahomes. After that, I think it's pretty open. It is the pinned comment on today's video. So if that ad comes here on YouTube, that's fine. Take advantage of it. Head down there. Let me know where you rank Burrow when healthy among NFL quarterbacks. Free agency idea being floated by Clutch Points is the Bengals should go out and sign Xavier and Howard to help upgrade their secondary with some things that make sense in the argument and some things that maybe don't. Here's what Trevon uh, Fakimi, who writes for Clutch Ports, uh, said in the piece. Bengals currently have roughly $23.5 million in cap space to work with. Spend on, on, spending some of that on former Dolphin corner Xavier Howard wouldn't be a bad idea. Howard struggled in defensive coordinator Vic Fangio's zone-heavy scheme, but he still was one of the best corners in the league the year prior. Howard shines best as a press man uh, corner and man coverage. Which is something the Bengals do a fair bit of. He'd be an instant upgrade for a Bengals secondary that was not great a year ago. To make matters worse, Chidabe Awuzie, their best corner the last couple years, also left in free agency for the Titans. I've got thoughts on that because I don't agree with everything that was written there. I'm not sure that's really the case. But would you sign Xavier Howard? Why for yes you would, you add him, you want to plug him in, you can bench DJ Turner. N for no, you would not. Get those answers in for me. Where else but in the comment section of today's video. Y or N. I lean like, okay, like fine, sure, but I don't think you have to go out and add him. Yeah, the Bengals had shown interest in the veteran corner. Howard, Stephon Gilmore, others still stand out. I would not be mad if they added Xavier Howard. I also would argue that saying he was one of the best corners in the NFL in 2022 
is probably not true. Um, in fact, his numbers are not that much worse than it was in 2023. The 2020 version, 2021 version, was still a special football player. I don't think he's the same guy. And that's why he is on the top of my, if someone gets hurt, let's call list. But I kind of want to see what these young guys do. Again, I've made this one before, I'll make it again. You got to play your young guys at a certain point. You can't always be drafting for the future, and then when the future comes, go, oh, well, we don't know how good he is. You, ha you have to make the present at some point a reality. And by the way, I think Cam to the Brit when healthy last year was heads and shoulders better than Awuzie. Like, he was awesome last year. I am excited about CTB this upcoming season. I want to see DJ Turner. Sounds like they're giving Dax Hill outside corn reps. More on that uh, on tomorrow's video as it comes to OTAs. Josh Newton I like. I, I got five corners I, 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 I can ride with. We'll see how DJ Ivy recovers from his own injury. But I don't need Xavier and Howard. Would I be mad about it? No. Do I need him? I don't think so. Could always re revisit the how camp goes as well. Now, the Amarius Mims, or Amarius Mims, rookie jersey is available. Chatsports.com slash Amarius Mims. Link will be in the comment section and the description of today's show. He is wearing number 71. The rookie jersey, offensive lineman. Hopefully, it's better than some of the recent picks. But I, I, I'm a big fan of Mims. I would definitely get that jersey if you want to have an offensive lineman, not just a skill guy, Chase Burrow, etc. Chatsports.com slash Amarius Mims. I want to spend some more time here on the wide receiving group. And I think, by the way, that the although I would rather have Chase and Higgins present at OTAs because I want them there, they're players that are key faces, I, I'd rather them be there. I do think this ends up being a beneficiary thing for Jermaine Burton, for Trenton Irwin, for Andre Yoshivas, and Charlie Jones. With no Chase, no Higgins, you got to put three receivers out there. These guys are going to get a ton of run as the battle for the wide receiver three spot alongside Chase and Higgins, and probably long-term wide receiver two, is going to be a huge talking point we'll have a lot of conversation on between now and camp and the preseason, etc. So first off, pick a wide receiver three. JB for Jermaine Burton, AI for Andre Yoshivas, a.k.a. Yoshi, Trenton Irwin, type in T-I, or CJ, type in Charlie Jones. Look, of that group, Burton is the most athletic, and Yoshi Voss is a pretty damn good athlete too, by the way. Even Charlie Jones is. Like, they're not like bad athletes. It's just, that's how good Burton is. He also had the most draft capital invested in him. I think that always matters when it comes to judging how good someone's going to be. Of the backups so far, I think I would argue that Burrow probably trusts Trenton Irwin the most among them. And he's had a little bit more playing time over the course of his NFL career than obviously Yoshi Voss, who flashed some last year. Charlie Jones, like, barely played. Burton, obviously, is a first-year player as well. He's been, I thought, was better in 2022 when it was more Burrow involved right there. And chemistry and trust between your receivers matters. We've seen it with Burrow before, right? A couple times last year, he kind of got mad at Irv Smith. He was like, I'm not throwing you the ball anymore. That's not a bad thing, by the way, for quarterbacks. So you need to have guys that those receivers or players that those quarterbacks trust. I was very impressed several times by Andre Yoshivas last season. I like his upside long term. I think that the size speed combination is impressive. He was far less raw than I think most of us thought he was going to have to be there. I liked Charlie Jones a lot coming out of Purdue. I am anxious that he just might kind of settle into being a core special teamer, that he might be a mainly return guy option. I'm I'm worried about this, but I'm getting Andy Isabella vibes as a receiver where he's kind of caught between being a slot and an outside guy. Like he was mostly an outside guy at Purdue, but he wasn't good enough to hang as an outside guy in the NFL, much like Isabella was at UMass. And he's just not a crisp enough route runner yet to be a slot receiver. I, I, I'm not out on Charlie Jones. Just a little bit anxious there. Big camp in Priest and coming up for him, of course. We will have coverage for you of training camp, of mini camp, of OTAs, of the preseason. You are one click away from year-round Bengals coverage. So take advantage of the opportunity. Hit that sub button right now. I wanted to get to one better than most trade idea around T. Higgins and why I, I, this is like the number one NFL media pipe. You're like, oh, we're getting T. Higgins outside of Cincinnati. I appreciate fan sided doing more than most trade offers. A second and a third this year, a first and a fifth next year 
is a big trade offer for T. Higgins. And frankly, a lot more than I think you'd actually get for him if you shopped him. But it's the make the Bengals say no package. So if you get a second, a third, a future one, and a future five, would you do that trade? T for trade, P for pass. Sound off for me in the comment section of today's video. If you ran the Bengals, Trader say, hey, we'll give you all that. Would you do it? T for trade, P for pass. Go ahead and sound off for me. Again, where else but the comment section of today's show. Look, I don't hate that offer. It's a pretty good offer. Um, but I can't see it happening. I, 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 a, it's not because of the Bengals. It's the Chargers. The Chargers are not a T. Higgins away. They, they, they are not. They don't want to shed picks either. Jim Harbaugh knows all these players. The Ravens organization they hired the GM from loves having extra draft capital. I'd also argue the Bengals don't want to help, help the, the Chargers, giving them a number one receiver, and now it's Ladd McConkey, Quentin, Quentin Johnston, and, and uh, Higgins. Actually, really good receiving core for, for Herbert. Most importantly, in the end, the Bengals don't make trades. This is not what the Bengals do. Even during the draft, they hardly ever make trades. It's like the, they, the, one of the more underrated trades of all time when they flip Billy Price for B.J. Hill and a seventh rounder, they got the better player and the draft pick in that deal. And then you're looking at, like, beyond that, uh, you know, they midseason shipped out Carlos Dunlap. It's not really important. So, as we've said before, Higgins' trade is not going to happen this offseason.